It's a partnership between Language in London, Language School of some renown, <laughs> and rather Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. And it, it's, a, it's two weeks, and the mornings are spent down the road at Language in London, yes. and the afternoons are spent at RADA. Yes, it's, um, it's a wonderful combination um, of two, I guess you could say, two expert fields coming together. Mm -hmm. And what we do at Language in London is we, we welcome our students into, I wouldn't say a classroom environment, it's a much more organic, natural kind of situation where we will meet every day and we have a three hour session in the morning where we look at a huge variety of British texts and we look at the pronunciation features, especially connected speech, which is very important if you want to sound natural and native-like speaker. Um, we heavily focus on connected speech, which then helps the student when they travel up to you guys in the afternoon, yes. and they get to embody that language. That's a very good way of putting it, to em embodying the language, because what happens when they come to us at RADA, first of all, they get a sort of a mini concentrated session on, on body language, on relaxation, on centering the energy, on breath, on making sounds. In other words, the sort of training that the drama student gets, because what the whole thing is about in the afternoon is about telling the story, about communicating this passage which we've chosen between us. From RADA, the, the key skills they would have would be an awareness of, of body language. They would have learned to breathe properly, to articulate, really to, to finish words, to, to understand how words work, to listen, to learn about intonation in English, to be able to stand up and, and make an effective presentation, and really to unravel poems and pieces of narrative. I think, I think if you can call confidence a skill, they, they are taught the skills to have the confidence. That's right. To be relaxed. That's right. So I that the skills contribute towards that confident communication. So that what they're saying is not falling there or onto the page, but actually reaching out. Like literally. Yeah, it's something that, that they... Yeah, it does. It's, it's, if, if confidence was a physical thing, mm. it's mm. something they, they carry away with yes. them. Yes, yes. I would say it would benefit them on every every single level, whether it's asking for a, a drink in a pub, um, or standing in front of a, of a classroom or something have to, or making a presentation, working with groups of, of English people in their own countries. I think it gives them confidence to know that they can stand there and do it, be seen, be heard, be properly understood. That's it, that's it. Be seen, be heard, be properly understood, as, as you said. And I see it as a student who sat at the back of the classroom and wouldn't volunteer the answer. Mm -hmm. But by the end of this course, they're the student who'll sit at the front of the classroom and volunteer the answer. Mm -hmm. I, that's how I see the journey, from the front of the classroom to from the back of the classroom to the front. And, Terrific. Yeah. Yes, and even standing in front. <laughs> and even standing in <laughs> yes. front. And, yes. and again, selling yourself in the way that uh, you will go mm. to that job interview right. and feel yes. confident, whether yes. it's in your own country or it's in an English-speaking country.